Here we go. Started. All yours. Good. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining as well um, and for being patient for those that joined early and, and wait until uh, the time that we are officially allowed to um, start this 2020 AGM. Let me bring up my screen. Let's see how this works. Can everybody see that? Harry, you can see that, huh? I've got it. Yep, okay, good. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone. And um, this is this is a bit of a, of a strange um, year that, that we are in that um, nobody expected, I guess, at the beginning. Um, we, we started out well and made a lot of plans for this year for our activities that uh, that we wanted to do with the um, and I here and and combined with uh, with London side with HQ as well that all got smashed quite quickly after uh, Chinese New Year and towards the end of uh, February when we learned about uh, the virus spreading and then the whole world basically shutting down. Um, so it's been a bit of a strange year and I do hope that everyone um, has remained healthy and um, even if the jobs are, are difficult now that at least all of you still have a job. As sadly enough, plenty of people that are not as healthy or that do not have a job. Um, so it's, it's, it's a difficult year. Um, Nevertheless, that the, the difficult circumstances, I think we've still had um, a good year when it comes to the activities that we have been able to organize for um, the branch here in Singapore. Um, later, we will go through the various um, webinars and other activities that, that we have done. So I'm, I'm quite happy with that and I very much would want to thank also all the um, committee members that uh, we have. Um, for all the work that, that they have put in as well as everybody um, from external speakers or other members that, that have joined these webinars and activities. So thanks so much uh, for all that hard work. Um, last year, one of the items that was mentioned during the AGM was on um, having a communication officer. And that put us to think. And one of the items that uh, during our first committee meeting that we put in place in, in January, we assigned five uh, people to have a dedicated uh, role within the committee. One of, and I'll, I'll go through the different uh, roles later on in, in the presentation as well, but I thought that was a really good idea that was raised last year at the AGM and, and that has had some good uh, benefits this year. Um, I'll be going through that a bit later. Another item I wanted to highlight was that we are really happy with the cooperation and uh, the quite close uh, working relation that we have with both MPA and uh, SMA as well. Um, and there is some, quite a number of activities that, that have been done with SMA and separately that we are planning on doing with uh, the MPA that we will touch on in, in the presentation later. So I'm really happy for that close uh, relation between us and SMA and MPA. I'm also happy that, um, we managed to set up our uh, YouTube account and we managed to set up um, an Instagram account that um, has quite a good number of, of followers and, and maybe we don't immediately see the benefit of it yet, but it is a good way for us to try and expand our reach and uh, come out a bit, bit more towards the younger um, members to, to try and, and get their activities in a bit more. Those were a few of the items I, I wanted to mention. Once again, thanks uh, to everyone for uh, joining. And that puts me on to the first uh, or the second point in, in the agenda, which is the approval of the minutes uh, for 2019. Now, this is probably too small on your screen to read, but I circulated the minutes about an hour ago to, to all the branch members' uh, emails. So I would want to ask if there is anybody that has any comments on the minutes.
and if there are no comments, um, I didn't hear any. Can I have one person to uh, propose the approval for the minutes? I propose, Leo. Leo, thank you. Can I have somebody second? Sorry, try that again. I'll second it, Manoj. Manoj, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. So the minutes have been approved. Then we move on to the next point, which is the treasurer and auditor's report. And um, I have included these three slides here, which is the auditor's report. But again, they were in the email that I circulated um, earlier. And Mike, can I ask you to, to highlight some of the points here? Yes, sir. if you go to the next slide, <clears throat> basically the, the accounts and the accounts, but the comments that I had on them were that the branch remains self-funded. We don't get any external funds from NIHQ, so we rely on members' donations for seminars, the annual seminar, um, and whatever else we can we can glean. Uh, it's been a very quiet year due to the COVID-19 pandemic limitations. From a from a financial perspective, I mean, there's a lot of the committee members have been beavering away on webinars and whatnot, but from a financial impact, that doesn't really affect us. Uh, and there's actually been no movement on the account in or out since April 2020. Um, we do need a new auditor from the membership. It's a, an item on the agenda later uh, to replace Nigel. And as you said, I mean, we'd love to know where Nigel is and if he's okay. I mean, I know Eve's tried, I've been trying, and um, no, no success whatsoever. And from a pure number perspective, the cash on hand at the end of September 2020 is very similar to last year. It's about $30,000. Uh, of, however, of that $30,000, $19,000 of it is sponsorship that, that's been paid in advance for the annual seminar. And those sponsors very kindly allowed us to keep that money on account uh, in preparation for the next seminar. However, we've also paid Helix 50% uh, of their fee, which is $8,000 for the annual seminar, and some other minor expenses, such as the event map. Um, so within that 30,000 uh, that we've got on the books, 19,000 of it is actually sponsorship money um, and 8,000 has been paid out. So it, you know, that's not in the 30,000. And also very kindly, of course, uh, Harry and ship owners have uh, contributed the best part of $25,000 for SunTech for the annual seminar, which we've delayed twice now, uh, but the money is still on account with SunTech. So that's about it really from a, from a financial perspective, unless anybody's got any comments. Thanks, Mike. Any questions from anyone on the accounts? Oh. Good. Um, so we had uh, Darren and Harry who uh, kindly reviewed the accounts and, and as per my, my previous slide, I have put the necessary um, signatures that, that we will be submitting as well to the SG government. Um, so thanks to both Darren and Harry for, uh, for this work, um, which brings us to the next point is that we need to appoint uh, auditors for uh, next year. Um, Darren has agreed to uh, take up the mantle again for uh, 2021, but uh, in order to replace uh, Nigel, I wanted to ask if anybody has any, um, if anybody wants to volunteer to do a review of uh, of the accounts prior the next uh, AGM. Yeah, Nick, Nick, um, Eves, it's a once a year thing. It doesn't take very long. Um, so, you know, we welcome somebody to take up the commitment. Um, Darren has been very good and very diligent. He actually picked up an error in the balance sheet at the last audit. So it's worthwhile doing it. And um, You don't need to have any particular um, auditing background, so there's no no requirement um, for this. I, I could volunteer. I can volunteer, Venkat. Sorry, I don't know who Raja. came who came first. Okay, let Raja Raja can do. Right. Um, okay. Good. Um, 
thanks so much for uh, volunteering then as well. And um, also thanks very much to Mike for, for uh, keeping the accounts uh, in order this year, even though it was a light job, but still thanks very much, Mike. Um, moving on to the next point is our overview of um, activities that, that we were able to organize this year. This is again something that I circulated earlier by email. And Ken, could you uh, comment a little bit more on these? Uh, thanks, uh, Yves. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I think, yeah, we've um, had an interesting year. And uh, as we all know, due to COVID, we uh, had a very good year last year in terms of branch activities and uh, the intention at the uh, first committee meeting that we had after the AGM last year, which I think was December, was to, to actually push ahead. And we had quite a few um, mini seminars um, planned, which we were gonna do at the Cricket Club. And um, unfortunately, you know, as we all know, due to COVID, that is all uh, fell, fell by the wayside. So in, um, it was our committee meeting, I think early May, where we actually um, had to look at, at other ways to engage. And uh, the committee decided that if we ran a series of, of webinars, um, that would be um, a useful way to engage. So over the year, um, we started off with, with two, um, and due to COVID and, and uh, at the time, um, obviously the seafarers that were being uh, you know, stuck on their vessels offshore, unable to do crew changes, et cetera, I think at that stage, I were looking at about 150,000 seafarers that were stuck um, on, on, on board ship. And that's when we ran the Seafarer Wellbeing um, webinar. And that went down, you know, really well. We were very um, happy with the, with the signups. We had over 100 signups to that. Um, and, and it was very well received. We then followed that up um, shortly afterwards with the um, successful crew changes. Um, that was extremely well attended and we had over 250 signups for that. Um, we also had a very good panel. We had the SSA, um, we had Anglo Eastern and Willemson Ship Management on that panel. So um, again, a, a very successful um, webinar there. We then had a little bit of a break um, and we ran another series of three webinars in October. Um, these covered e-navigation and we had uh, our now president, Gillian Clarkson-Jackson, um, on that with Harry Hurst and Captain Chatur of, of the Singapore Poly. And then we did a container, um, the ad ad adequacy of container lashings, again, well attended. And we finished off with uh, a cybersecurity webinar in which we had uh, people from Tomei, uh, Chartwell, Stephen, thank you for that, and Savante from uh, DNVGL. That again was extremely well attended and we had over 250 signups on, um, on that webinar. So it, all in all, I think, you know, given the situation that we had and our ability to, um, you know, to engage with members and try very hard, there were obviously a lot of webinars. Everyone was having webinars. Uh, um, so it was quite difficult to, to sort of try and decide on topics that would be appropriate that hadn't been um, hammered to death already. And, and I think we, uh, we we managed that quite well, and we're very happy with the results of that. Um, obviously, yeah, COVID continues to play a role in in our activities, um, and um, you know, as we're having the AGM online now as well, unable to meet at the club and have a beer, but um, yeah, hopefully that will um, you know ease off next year, and we'll be able to get together again and and meet. I think the other thing that um, I need to highlight to you is not only you know webinars and, and social events, um, but uh, the Nautical Institute was invited last year to um, put a, a member onto the National Maritime uh, Safety at Sea Council um, that is uh, hosted by the by the MPA, and uh, Eves as president has, has taken up that role, and they've had some incredibly good discussions. Um, through the meetings that they've had this year and through working groups. Um, they've discussed the inter-craft um, transfer of personnel or transfer of personnel between per, um, vessels in Singapore. Obviously COVID and crew changes has taken a, 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 front, uh, a front page on that. 
and also leading on from that and opening up for the ferries between Batam and Singapore. So I think the most important thing there is that the MPA recognize um, the input that the Nautical Institute can bring uh, to such a, such a committee. And um, obviously uh, it's, it's good to have Eves on that, uh, on that uh, committee. So I think that's um, a wrap for the activities. Um, obviously, we will continue to keep an eye on how we can get together, how we can meet. And um, we, we hope that we can get back to um, our mini seminars at the Cricket Club in, in the new year. Thanks. Ken, do you want to say something about the conference as well? Yes. Um, and obviously, leading on from that then, our main conference that was planned uh, for May of, of this year at SunTech. Um, that was uh, you know, planned to deal with, with navigation issues. Um, and unfortunately, again, due to COVID, we, we had hoped that you know, in the early part of the year, we were still very hopeful that uh, COVID would have gone away by May. Um, but as the months and weeks passed, uh, that became um, obviously uh, something that wouldn't happen. We then looked at um, postponing it to sort of October of, uh, of this year. And again, we realized that that wasn't going to happen. We've had various discussions with Suntech uh, with regards to, you know, being able to move the date. Um, we have now paid, as Mike said, we've paid for the venue. Um, and we have been allowed to postpone until December 2021. So um, although we would like to have the conference in in May, um, because it, it meets a lot, of the, a lot of the things that we've discussed before in terms of the normal calendar. We feel that May might be a bit too early in terms of uh, relaxation of COVID regulations and, and meeting requirements. So we are looking at um, uh, October of 2021 at the moment to hold the, um, to hold the main conference. Um, everything is really on, I suppose, on hold. We've got Helix set up. Um, who are assisting us with the marketing of that. Um, we've got some sponsors are, are on board. Um, and obviously once we get into the new year and we find um, that, you know, we can set a firm date, we will obviously then move ahead with our plans and preparations um, to line up our guest speakers and sponsorship, et cetera, and speakers for the panels. So um, keep an eye out there, main conference, hopefully October next year. Thanks, Ken. Okay, um, I'll carry on, Eves. Yeah, I can. Go on. Just um, for everyone to uh, just have a reminder, obviously um, this year there is no requirement because uh, the committee members um, sign up for two years. Um, so obviously there's no need to um, have an election of any um, office bearers or um, changes to the committee um, this year. So that's just an overview quickly as to um, who's on the committee. And um, uh, I think the next slide as well, we will show you just who um, we have set up. So in, in committee meeting, I think it was December last year, we, we realized that we needed to have various um, people looking after various sections. So this is just an overview. Uh, Kunal has put his hand up for media officer and he's done a great job through this year. He's managed to grow both um, the LinkedIn following <clears throat> and they set up Instagram and YouTube channels, as Eve mentioned early on. So that's that's really great, and it does allow us to, um, you know, the, the webinars we do record them, and we put the webinars up uh, online after that. So people that didn't that did sign up or didn't manage to make it uh, are able to go back and have a look. So I think that's been uh, very well received. Um, Rahul is uh, the training coordinator, and unfortunately, um, none of the physical courses that were planned this year were possible um, again due to COVID. So uh, there have been some virtual courses that were initiated by HQ. So unfortunately a little bit quiet on that front. Um, Anna is uh, very involved in the um, Young Members Council with the NIHQ and uh, she continues to work um, to work on that and uh, you know make sure that uh, Singapore's uh, views are, um, are realized at, at that level. Uh, Venkat is looking at the members. We currently have 180 odd members. Um, there are some members on our list that we that we do know have uh, have moved back to the UK, etc., on retirement. Um, but yeah, we have a, approximately 180 members uh, on the on the Singapore membership. 
And then Harry, uh, very kindly last year, agreed to be the social secretary, um, and that was for organising events and um, you know smaller seminars. But uh, I'm I'm afraid due to COVID again, uh, Harry has uh, not managed to do much uh, social activity. So um, I'm not sure if that heading's uh, correct there. Eves, maybe it should be anti-social secretary. I, I um, agree. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it, it has been a difficult year, and I think. Um, you know, hopefully, as I say, things will improve next year, and we will be able to um, we'll be able to have our meetings again and uh, socialise and network. Uh, and, and I think we all look forward to that, and we all miss that certainly. So I'll hand back to Eve now, who will um, take us uh, through the next few points. Thanks, Ken. Just one point I wanted to mention as well on the membership side, um, because quite often we we get questions from members uh, that are registered in another branch. Um, who are then concerned that they, when they move country, that they cannot change their branch. But there's there's absolutely no problem, and you can simply inform um, an IHQ, or even when you log in on your account on the main website, you can change the branch that you are associated with. Um, and similarly, please keep that website up to date with with um, your email and your address, etc., so that you can receive the the seaways and and of course my emails, um, because I I download it from from the website as well to know who is on on our uh, branch. I would also want to ask all the members that that are here, please continue spreading the word um i think it is really good that we we are up to 180 members i think that's that's really well done when when venkat initially started uh, the branch um what is that now four years ago i i think um i think it is quite an achievement that we are at 180 um but i also believe that there should be more people still working in the maritime that might already be members of uh, NI that just have not registered under the Singapore branch or maybe that um, should become members of NI. No matter where I, I am that I am speaking on, on behalf of NI, I will always try and, and uh, put the, the benefits forward of, the, of being a member. So Please, everyone, help and, and let's try and grow our uh, membership. Earlier, Ken was mentioning that uh, we have a seat now um, as the branch. We have a seat on the MPA's uh, National Maritime Safety at Sea Council, which I think is really good that we have that, that kind of collaboration with uh, the flag state here. And as part of that, um, we, have, we have also been asked to participate in the MPA Safety at Sea, which of course also was scheduled to be done earlier in the year, uh, but has now been delayed until uh, 30th November and, and 1st of December, so in a couple of weeks. Um, and we've been asked to moderate the first plenary that will take place on the 1st of December, which will be on uh, mental well-being and seafarer well-being. Um, so that's really nice. We, we have a, a quite a couple good panelists on it. Um, I know separately Kunal is uh, also moderating one of the plenaries and I forgot God, who is doing the third, who is moderating the third? Kunal, do you remember who is doing the third session? Always asking people difficult questions. I know, I know. I put them in a corner without warning. I ask questions. <laughs> Kunal is not when hey, furiously Googling. Uh, no, no, you may be Googling. <laughs> hey, Eve, you forgot to say that you got the blue award for getting new members in oh yeah true we did indeed i did forget about that already um that's standing on my desk actually i should know it i walk by it every day um yeah we did indeed get get an award from uh, nihq to to the branch um for increasing our membership with i believe it was more than than 30 people in a year i, I believe the award was um, so that's quite nice. Um, appreciated that from from uh, from HQ. Um, one other item which I actually forgot to mention is um, that our 
uh, Mike has been elected as uh, vice president um, on the HQ's uh, council um, and myself as well. I'm, I'm a member of the HQ council now. So that's, that's good to give uh, more visibility to the Asia uh, region on, on the, the main council. Um, I then wanted to open up a little bit to, to AOB. Um, one of the items, I, I put the list there of our YouTube and Instagram and, and LinkedIn, and, and please do follow um, those. I'm not going to try and spell the YouTube account. You, you can actually just in YouTube search for, for uh, Nautical Institute and you should find us. Be careful you don't click on the the one from HQ, make sure it's the Singapore one. On AOB, um, if we, I don't know how we can do this. Can we raise hands for that? Is that a way to, to more easily do the AOBs? If anybody wants to raise, Stefan, you have your hand up. I saw that first. Do you want to unmute yourself? There you go. Stefan is having technical difficulties. Hello. There you are. Yep. I only wanted to test if we can raise my hand, so nothing else. Anything, <laughs> anything else needed? Okay. Thank you, Stefan, for, for your contribution. Um, I think Raja also had his hand up. I don't know whether he was testing. Raja? I was, I was just suggesting that anybody had to say anything, just raise their thumbs up. That's how we could do it. Nothing, nothing else from my side. Thanks, Harry. <laughs> Kunal, you have your hand up. Kunal, you are no. muted. I think the finger is related to the mic. You know, the moment the finger goes up, the mic then kind of uh, mutes. Hold on, thank God. Yeah, hold on. Let let Kunal try and find. Okay, Kunal is putting his hand down, Venkat. Okay, uh, I just want to check, why don't we for next year, coming year, I think we should plan our, whether COVID is there or not there. Uh, I think by the way it is going, why don't we do, have a system of uh, planning our webinars well in advance so that, uh, you know, in the event that we need to conduct uh, offline uh, seminar or half day seminar, I think we should be in a position to prepare for it rather than having it in one month or, you know, every week type of stuff. Yep. And that is, that's a good point, Venkat. Let's, we'll, we'll, um, we can discuss that in the next committee meeting and then go to, uh, see how we can put up a planning for, uh, for the year. And if anybody has any good okay. topics about what we, what we should organize uh, in our next webinar, please do let, let us, uh, let us know. Does anybody else have their hand up? Actually, I don't know where I can see. I think on the screen it comes, there's a big thumb that comes across. So. But so I don't far. know if, if the second page of webcams has has any. Mm, I've got all on one page, but I think it's ah, so far so okay. I can't see anything, Eves. Okay, good. Um, Kunal, you typed something. Vibas is moderating the se the third session. Yeah, that's correct. I forgot about him. Um, I thought it was Atul. No. I think Atul originally maybe was was on I it, see. but I think now Vibas is um, is doing. If you wish to be featured on the LinkedIn page, yes, good point, uh, Kunal. And, and at the beginning of the year, we did a couple of uh, features on, um, I think we did uh, myself, we did Mike, we did Nick, um, we did 
Harry, I believe. We did a couple of people uh, that we made uh, like a feature piece, a spotlight on on our main LinkedIn page. Um, anybody that that wants to do so, by all means, please contact Kunal. Um, and, and we are happy to, to put something on uh, LinkedIn. I, I think we need to try and find ways to make our LinkedIn more active, get discussions going, even if we want to have a, a discussion on, on cyber regulations or, or anything else that is coming up, not on crew change, um, that is coming up. We should make use of, of that to, to have a good communication amongst uh, members or, or non-members as well. Venka, did you wave at me? Yes, uh, yeah, I think it, it takes, uh, you need to acknowledge uh, Mike for being the first uh, Chartered Master Mariner, uh, which is a NI and CMMI joint initiative <laughs> from, South, from Asia. That, that is a really good point. Yeah, Mike was part of the of the initial uh, batch of uh, of people that participated in in the chartered uh, master mariners um, organized by by NI and and um, who else is the the main company again, Mike, that does this? Yeah. So con congrats to uh, to Mike for that. Um, online sessions has helped bring so many branches of an eye together. I think there is also something, I mean, that's very true. Um, I think more can be done there as well. I, I know the India branch has been uh, very active in, in organizing uh, events and the um, Gillian's branch as well in, in Australia has been very active in doing things. I don't think there is enough cooperation between branches actually to do joint uh, sessions, which I think is something that that can be picked up. Um, and actually, Mike, that's that's something in December at the council meeting we can uh, we can raise as well. Um, I, I was slightly disappointed a couple of days ago when I saw that uh, an IHQ is organizing a webinar on uh, cyber regulations. Um, while they uh, knew that we did one a couple of, uh, well, or a month ago and never um, participated in, in ours. So I think there is a, a bit of an opportunity if things are going virtual that, that there is more cooperation between the branches themselves and then also um, HQ. <laughs> Any... Actually, at this moment, at, at this moment, the uh, one of the biggest uh, things is today we have uh, from Singapore, we have enough uh, with Duncan, the treasurer, and now Mike as a vice president, and you are being on the council. We have a lot of initiative in terms of the uh, pushing through initiatives within Asia region. And maybe at some point, I think this was discussed in a couple of AGMs ago, where Singapore can take the lead to be the, uh, you know, South Asian uh, representative or you know, try to get all these South Asian branches members together. It, it can be done, maybe. I, I think this this uh, web this conference that we were planning on organizing in May this year was going to be a cooperation as well between uh, Hong Kong, Indonesia, and uh, the Malaysian uh, branch. Um, but then, okay, now that's that's postponed. But I think it is something we definitely need to try, and and get more cooperation between the branches. Anna is just mentioning that the NI's Continuous Development Committee has discussed webinars and cooperation of branches um, on their last session two days ago. Okay, thanks, Anna. Sangam, yeah, fully agree with you as well. Eves, what about cooperation? We're talking of the various NI branches, I know, but there are a lot of also other uh, organizations where we can also collaborate with, you know, in the senses we've got um, other organizations within Singapore as well. Uh, for example, we've got the Institute of Chartership Brokers. 
um, you know, we've got EMRS. We could do a little bit of information sharing and a little more collaboration with them at least because we are all on the same page, if you know what I mean. Um, so, and Singapore being so small as uh, large it is, the fraternity is quite large. So maybe we can uh, participate in each other's activities also. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I, I did set up a link with uh, I'm Arrest with the local rep here, um, but then the webinars I actually never circulated to to them. Um, there's also Youngship, which I know Anna has been been trying to get in touch with, or has been in touch with. Sorry, uh, that would be good to to rope in. Uh, and as well, we have um, you, Harry, that that will be guest speaking at um, at the SMA um, on on regular uh, occasions, yeah. or anybody else. Actually, we we made. Um, an understanding with SMA that uh, whenever they they would want that anybody from the branch can come and and um, sorry if they need somebody Virendra yeah. don't kill me um, that that uh, we can field um, an expert from our uh, branch to uh, to go and talk to the to yeah. the cadets yeah because I'm also a part of the company of Master Mariners of India that I've just started in Singapore the Singapore chapter which has started in September. And uh, we are also looking to do something very similar to the Nautical Institute that we need to actually serve our seafarers, um, you know, uh, and that's the same ideology. So uh, that is also another uh, avenue. Yeah. Sangam, happy for you to have a chat with uh, Captain Dutt. I assume that Sangam, IG's iPad, I assume that. that... Yeah. You're dealing too much with the international group. <laughs> Leo, yeah, fine as names. Ah, yeah, okay. I, I, I guess that correctly, Sangam. I... Anna, yeah, good idea. Let's discuss with Youngship and, and find some um, topics that, that we can organize uh, together. Um, one of the other things that, that we were looking into, but again, COVID um, has, has stopped us from doing so, um, is setting up, um, what was it? It wasn't a cricket team, uh, but it was that. What's what's that other version of sport? The smaller version, futsal, 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 yeah, futsal. Um, so that's something that that we were trying to uh, to set up as well, and and Rahul is is looking into that. So once the restrictions are lifted, that's probably something that we will uh, pick up again. And one other idea that, that Rahul had, with, which I think would be interesting, is for, for us to organize a quiz. Um, and that can be not just on, on uh, Singapore level, but we can combine it with, with a number of other branches or, or non-members and just organize um, a maritime quiz. Good. Is there any last comments? Otherwise, I will move towards um, closing. Mike, yes, agree on that. Okay, if nothing further, then I would want to thank everyone um, very much for, for um, staying online glad that we managed to finish the agm within one hour and that there were quite some good um, ideas that were floated that we will work on in in the next year by all means if anybody wants uh, to raise an, an idea or or wants to assist with anything just contact any of us and more than happy to to see what we what we can do i, I really i'm quite keen on growing the branch here in, in Singapore and, and uh, increase the number of activities that, um, that we are having. Once again, thanks to everyone. Thanks to the committee members. Thanks to um, 
our office bears and well let's make it a successful 2021 hopefully without COVID. We need to get a couple of photos Eves of the, the Zoom you know profile so you can put on the LinkedIn and whatnot. Oh okay hold on yeah don't everyone run away. Have Ask everybody to people. put on their cameras yeah. Yeah everybody yeah. put the camera on. If those that are still here give me one second put your hair in good shape smile put back your zoom shirt on put your zoom shirt back on <laughs> don't stand up don't stand up yeah <laughs> let's see if i can get this okay good i have a picture thank you for smiling nick is on there with his gorilla face so that's a good thing you'll go on linkedin with that nick <laughs> okay, thank you everyone. Have a good evening, have a good weekend, and see you soon. Thanks everyone. Yeah, thanks Eves. Bye. Thanks everybody. See you soon. <laughs>